Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Legacy filmed at Scholars Games in Brockton, Mass. And Jacob's leading out with Cabal Therapy off of a misty rainforest, uh, meaning I guess it would have to be Bayou, and it is. And that is going to signal Nick Fit right there. Cabal Therapy completely whiffing up against Death Shadow. Likely named Force of Will with Therapy the second time, though. Veteran Explorer coming down, and that's what this deck is all about. He's going to be able to get one of those cards out of my hand. Looks like he's going to go with Days, which is an interesting choice. I do feel like Days is going to get obsoleted pretty quick, uh, but I guess we'll have to see what the curve looks like in his hand. He may be playing some stuff right at the top of the curve. Uh, snuff out. Uh, possibly could pull some weight in this match. I guess we'll see uh, how many non-black creatures he comes up with. Nick Fit. Popular for people who really enjoy playing Magic kind of the way it was originally pitched. Uh, you know, back in the day and revised, uh, you know, in New England, you'd hear like you, you cast monsters with your, you summon monsters with your lands and you've got spells that can kill their monsters or make your monsters better. And it's all about, you know, getting like the best creatures. I feel like Nick Fit is very fun if that was the original thing. If you liked Force of Nature or Shiv and Dragon back in the day, you could have a lot of fun uh, shuffling up. Venner Explorer and Friends. Uh, green Sun Zenith gets a whole toolbox of green creatures. Here we have a green and black creature. I forget the name of him. He's a commander exclusive card, I believe. Uh, and he's going to return a creature either uh, from the graveyard or to hand during each end step. Uh, if, he's, if creatures start dying, then he's going to start getting uh, counters and, or experience counters, uh, Jacob will, and then the effect will start returning them to the battlefield. So this is going to get out of hand really quickly. Going to want to find a uh, dismember to clear that guy out of the way if possible. This is looking pretty bad pretty early. Veteran Explorer uh, has this real unbalanced effect when you're playing against a deck with zero basics. I mean, you're accelerating your plan tremendously, and you're not doing anything to help them. Uh, contrast that with a deck like Miracles that can actually be happy about using, uh, about getting those extra basics. And a couple of Death Shadows here. Veteran Explorer coming back down. And he's being sacrificed to Diabolic Intent. Uh, so basically a Demonic Tutor for this deck. Plus getting two lands. Let's see what he's going to do with this four available mana. A lot of, a lot of options. Get literally any card in the deck. You get something more powerful for next turn, or do you make the most impactful play right now? Let's see what he does. Fatal push takes out a death shadow. Veteran Explorer comes back, and it'll be coming back every turn. That is a huge problem. That's going to make it extremely difficult to get damage through when there's just recurring 1 1s all over the place. Only thing would be worse if it was Spore Frog coming back. Just the ability to block each turn. Gonna make these non trampling threats significantly worse. A ball therapy. Likely gonna hit Snuff out here. Now that card in hand will be taken off of the flashback. Stubborn Denial. Just a 3-3. Three, three. 
is Death Shadow. So Stubborn Denial, uh, not going to be a hard counter. Not that it would have been that much use anyways. If Death Shadow was larger, could have possibly made sense to use Snuff Out to kill the Veteran Explorer. Uh, but now things are things are out of hand now. The Scarab God is going to be a huge problem. This is not going to end well. Getting through on the ground is going to be almost impossible. Missing the upkeep trigger there. It can be easy to do when you're so far ahead. Green Sun Zenith. There, Zenith has got to get shuffled back in. Yeah, I think Jacob's in a place here where he feels so far ahead uh, that perhaps not playing his absolute tightest. Getting back Fatal Push. And going to cycle Street Wraith as the lone card in hand. And Garrick... Relentless is flipping and KO in game one here. Well done by Jacob. Taking down game one off the back of some very fun card choices. Really the major criticism of Tin Fins would be what the deck plays like when you don't get Veteran Explorer. Uh, but the synergy of, of Veteran Explorer is really tremendous uh, with your entire plan. You get so many basic lands, you just spam the board with massive creatures, each one of them a huge threat on its own, and uh, you can play through a huge amount of counters as well. Uh, back in the day when counterbalance was a thing, uh, you know, it certainly dominated Legacy for quite some time. Nickfit was an interesting choice then, given that you had spells all the way up and down the curve, uh, there are not a ton of things that they're going to be flipping uh, when you're playing cards like, um, I mean, I'd say Grave Titan, but, you know, they do have Terminus for that. Uh, but still, you know, they they definitely have a lot of variety. It's not like they're just jammed up at one in two mana, uh, like so many decks like Death Shadow. Looks like Days is coming out. going to be pretty bad. Might have been good enough to keep in on the play. Definitely don't want it in on the draw. In my estimation. I think on the play days could be a totally reasonable card. Dazing a veteran explorer is absolutely great. And that guy's going to go fetch those two basics pretty much no matter what. I mean, Cabal Therapy, obviously a great way to put him into the graveyard. Uh, but aside from that, you also have just mucking up the ground. Cycling Street Wraith, fetching, going down to 15 right away. And a Delver. And there's, uh, that looks like a Battle Bond. I think that's the Battle Bond Veteran Explorer. Brainstorm. Looks like Wasteland in hand. Three in the air comes down. Some reasonably efficient effects here. See about the ability to keep. Oh, and Fatal pushing his own veteran explorer, looking to jumpstart things. Very interesting with Delver on board. We'll see if this ends up being too cutesy. Getting to shuffle away those cards off a of brainstorm. An abrupt decay. Taking that Delver down. Let's see what we can do to get back on board a wasteland. And pass, so that's very much in Jacob's favor. If that's all that's going on here. 
plenty of basic lands. Wasteland not usually very good versus Nickfit. They do have so many basics. Baleful Strix. That guy will potentially pose a problem. All of the threats. Pretty high value in Death Shadow. Death Shadow, of course, can close out a game in just a couple of swings. Gurmag Angler as a 5-5 can really end games as well. Delver chips away very efficiently. And even Street Wraith is going to have evasion, almost a almost a better Delver uh, if you ignore the mana costs. Uh, certainly if you have the choice of reanimating one of the two, Street Wraith is better if you can afford it. Uh, afford to lose a life, which you typically are looking to do. Uh, Tireless Tracker comes in for Jacob and gets a clue. Doesn't have a fetch land to use there. Fetch land would have been nice. Could have really played a waiting game. If I do attempt to destroy the Tireless Tracker, he could respond with fetching. Get another clue. Such a grindy addition. I actually haven't played against... Nick fit with Tireless Tracker seems like a fantastic addition to the deck. You don't get to play against it very often. I will say that's another strength of the deck. For certain. Not really in people's testing gauntlets. And there is a Death Shadow as a 6-6. Six -six, but it's facing down a 1-1 one -one Baleful Strix. Three mana... Pernicious Deed. We've got some games to play here. So that can take out Death Shadow and leave the Baleful Strix on board. Liliana, the last hope coming down. Not sure that's actually a good card in this matchup. It's certainly a very grindy card, but pretty tough to outgrind Nick Fit. So Liliana on board. Death Shadow in play versus the Pernicious Deed. Jacob's life very low. He's going to need to crack that deed in all likelihood to stay alive here. Any type of life loss can turn this uh, Death Shadow into a lethal strike. We've got a one mana, or a X equals one green sun zenith. Interesting. The veteran explorer. Huh. And that is likely just to be KO'd by Liliana. It is. Jacob going to go get two more basics. And what does Jacob do here? Does he take the damage? Will he blow the deed? Popping Horizon Canopy, and he will keep... Around here, Thought Seize. Chose the Scarab God, Deed, and Diabolic Intent. Scarab God, a huge pain. You do not want that creature entering the battlefield. And Gurmag Angler. Sets a two-turn clock, so let's see. Now, Pernicious Deed is going to be tough to... Got five mana, so getting to seven to use Deed to blow up Gurmag Angler, a tall order from here. Really a nice added benefit of the, the Angler. You need to hit Runner Runner lands. And Eternal Witness would have been a problem. And it looks like it's all going to come down to top-decking a land here for Jacob. Can he do it? 
push him to three. Minusing Liliana, getting a Death Shadow. Looking for the reload if he does hit the land. Six mana, what? Nope. Does he have a threat to cast here? Green Sun Zenith, X equals five. And Thrag Tusk, that is a very interesting card here. Ooh. Gaining life, a difficult to deal with body. He's going to get a 3-3 three, three here. Now, Death Shadow coming down. So he can blow up Deed to get rid of the 3-3 three, three and the Death Shadow. There's at least one more turn here. And Nyssa, another onboard threat here, going to allow him to look, try and find a creature or a land. Finds Baleful Strix. So this is a really grindy game. At least Liliana can take out that Baleful Strix. If he draws a land, we're going to be in terrible shape. Deed's going to be able to blow up all the things. Brainstorm finds a bunch of creatures. We're keeping Force of Will in hand. What we can expect there, that Drag Tusk's token ends up blocking Gurmag, and then Deed is blown up after blocks. Getting Gurmag Angler and Death Shadow. He had to blow up Deed there, so a land is actually not the, the main point. He really does need to find some blockers now. Death Shadow, absolutely massive. And that's going to do it for game two. So Death Shadow squaring up here. About 14 minutes left in the match. A favorable situation for Death Shadow, and I'd imagine Nick Fit a little bit slower in closing out games. One thing that I find I kind of am always introducing to new tournament players, people who are, have played casually and have started getting into tournaments, is the huge amount of difference between what your goals can be in Magic. When your goal is to win a game of Magic versus a match of Magic versus winning tournaments, those are all very different things, and clock management is extremely important for winning tournaments. So here, going into Game 3, with a very comfortable range for Death Shadow, I mean, you'd actually want even less time on the clock, and that would make it even harder for Jacob to find a way to win. So you could put yourself in a situation where worst case you get a draw and best case you win. And that is a major difference uh, when you're talking about tournament players succeeding and failing. One match per tournament uh, where that happens can literally just be the difference in between top eighting or not. Uh, fairly solid opening here for Jacob. He's got the Veteran Explorer and this time into Diabolic Intent. He's able to search, so he's getting a Demonic Tutor and a uh, couple of lands. I don't know if he sequenced that properly. That's interesting. There we go. Looks like he did. You definitely need to resolve your trigger before you resolve your tutor. Baleful Strix drawing another card. So just so much value on Jacob's side of the board here. Watery Grave into Thoughtseize, pushing the life total down. 
Colonel Witness, a likely candidate here. Don't feel very good about taking anything with Thoughtseize when they can just get it back with Witness. Skipping away with Baleful Strix, hitting Wasteland. Oh, it's actually not Wasteland. That is, uh... Oh, this this deck goes so deep. It, uh... It has a two-sided Ghost Quarter. Uh, let me know in the comments what the name of that card is. I would appreciate that. Of course, Death Shadow has no basics to fetch. Not even a single basic island. Which may be questionable. It may make a lot of sense to have a basic swamp and a basic island in this deck. Oh, resolving the, uh, the destruction from the turn before there. Uh, so ponder happening. We've got reanimate in the graveyard. Uh, reanimate in those top three. Reanimate really pushing this deck over the top, in my view. And here, Watery Grave coming into play tapped. So starting to pump the brakes. Quite a bit. Veteran Explorer. And Liliana, the Last Hope. Gonna try and get grindy here. Liliana's ultimate could be a valid strategy if there were more time on the clock. So it looks like perhaps not the type of card you want in in the deck. Probably should have taken a couple of minutes to sideboard for a more aggressive game. This Liliana is going to take us down a path we actually don't want to go. Him to Torok. Fighting an uphill battle of card advantage here. Getting rid of Pernicious Deed and Surgical. Looking to slowly try and keep the life around. I'm trying to see if there's a Brainstorm. There is a Brainstorm, so... I think that's probably a suboptimal play as well. Brainstorming before that shuffle effect could have been well worth it. Get the life. And there's the Scarab God. That is going to be a huge pain to get off the board and keep it off the board. Fatal Push shows up, and that's no good. I believe Reanimate being able to hit opposing creatures would be very valid here. And a reanimate being shuffled away. Yeah, I think there's some missed lines rewatching my play here. I feel like reanimate on Eternal Witness to get back reanimate is a totally fine line. Yep, mistakes were made here. I'm really enjoying Death Shadow, though. I feel like every time I've picked it up, there were a lot of improvements I could have made, even in the games I'm winning and the matches I'm winning. Uh, it does feel like there's a lot of decisions. Using your life as a resource just adds a whole nother uh, layer of complexity, which I really enjoy. Uh, it kind of has a lot of the fun of playing a combo deck. Uh, but also has the control elements that I really, uh, really like to bring to a tournament, having Force of Will and all of that. Leovold's coming down here. And Diabolic Edict clears him out of the way. And we are in time here, so it looks like Jacob will be turn number one.
very much missing the reanimate line here. Baleful Strix is found. The Scarab God lands and his triggered ability threatens to close this out. Jacob's going to get two turns. Turn three and five here of turns. So not exactly shocking going to time with Nick Fitz. It is an extremely grindy deck. But he may have all the tools he needs here just to close it out. And there we go. Four mana to bring back. This is turn three. He can bring back another creature. And now his trigger is going to drain for three. We're actually just dead to the Baleful Strix in the air. And that is it. So Jacob managing his time perfectly down toward the end to find a way to get a win in a match that easily could have been a draw to start things out. So well played, Jacob. That's all for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please help grow the channel by subscribing. You'll be notified when we upload new videos like Fast Effect, Double Speed Magic with Commentary, or Untapped, our raw tournament gameplay. Thanks for watching.